First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn over to Mike uh, to have him explain on the code changing process. Mike, who decides uh, how the code is changed? Well, thanks, Phil. Um, it's really the public. It's uh, established through public input and public comments. The, um, the process itself is open. It's ANSI accredited and uh, it's very transparent uh, and anybody can participate with the exception of NFPA staff. There's four phases to the uh, development process. The first phase includes uh, accepting public inputs. The committees act on the public inputs. The second phase includes uh, comments to the public inputs and uh, the committees act on those public comments. In the third phase, the technical uh, session at the annual meeting allows the membership to weigh in on what transpired over the cycle. And then the last phase is standards council issuance of the document. Mike, I understand there are some articles that were added, deleted, combined. Can you shed some light on what's been changed in the 2020 NEC? Sure, Phil, um, I'd be happy to. There are actually four new articles, but they're not necessarily all containing new information. There may be relocated information in some of these new articles. They're just uh, uh, showing up in a different position in the NEC. The first one is Article 242. Article 242 resulted from the combining of Articles 280 and 285, dealing with surge arresters and surge protective devices. The next new article is Article 311, and it deals with medium voltage conductors and cables. And this resulted from removing all of the medium and high voltage provisions in, in Article 310, and relocating them into a new Article um, uh, 311. Also in Article 311 are the installation provisions and construction specification requirements that were formerly located in Article 328. And there's a new Article 337, and its title is Type P Cable. And for all practical purposes, this Type P Cable um, is a uh, shipboard or marine style cable that was commonly used and is commonly used in applications such as offshore uh, oil drilling platforms and so forth. But the NEC sees requirements uh, in Article 337 for Type P cable. In Article 800, uh, there was some work that went on uh, structurally in Chapter 8. Article 800 now contains all the general requirements that apply to all of the Chapter 8 articles, and new Article 805 contains the specific requirements that formerly existed in Article 805. 